So welcome to DX Talks, another episode, another new topic, and this time we are fully immersive in the metaverse. Today we're going to be having a special guest with us who is really on the forefront of this technology. He's been there for a while. He's one of the leaders and maybe the first innovators in this space. Uh, Sebastian Bourguet, the co-founder and CEO of Sandbox. We welcome him and here we go. Hi, Sebastian. How are you doing? Hello, hello. I'm great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, uh, Sebastian, first, again, thank you for being with us and being on DX Talks. You are one of the pioneers of the metaverse. Uh, can you tell us more first on how can we uh, really define, uh, it's a basic question for our audience, what's your definition of a metaverse? Absolutely. Well, you, you know, like the concept of the metaverse uh, gets back into like science fiction books and movies as well as invented. The term was first coined by Neil Stephenson almost 25 years ago. So I early in the metaverse, but not that early. But still really happy to share with you like how we see the metaverse today, far from that dystopian vision. We see it more like a space, like this a myriad of virtual worlds where users can access using an avatar that is this 3D, a new digital identity, a 3D representation of themselves. They can access to like more social, more fun, more immersive, more creative virtual worlds, spaces. And they can take that identity, their avatar, from one to any of those worlds seamlessly. So their avatar, all their digital belongings, whether like their virtual goods, their wearables, their equipment, their game item, their currencies, their virtual land, their virtual houses even, they can use them across any of those worlds without any restriction, without any limitation. They could transfer it to other users. They could sell it on marketplaces if they want. That's the big differentiator between what we've seen before, which has been like MMORPGs and video games or virtual world where users could have an avatar, could have like virtual goods, but were actually limited into one single platform. They couldn't move their content, their identity from one to another. It was... Every one of those worlds were like silo, whereas the metaverse is this idea of like being open, allowing users to move from one to another and developing through that new use cases, new format of entertainment, and even an open economy through blockchain and NFTs and digital asset of value. Uh, excellent. I think you just shared with us a very nice uh idea. What's the future? You mentioned some of the things, but what's really the future? Is it what we see today? Or uh, because, you know, we, when we go all around and then we look at uh, also your competitors, such as Meta, which they rebranded themselves into the world of Metaverse. Where is the Metaverse actually going? So we, we know for sure that the Metaverse is going to happen. It's like both a technological and a social revolution. But it will take time for like the use cases and the content to come through. And that's one of the current challenge of the metaverse. Like we're still very early on into like building the premises to enable like the both the infrastructure, the tools, the capability, but more importantly, the content, the experiences that will drive those audience into them because people want to see new things. They want to discover how concretely they can interact with each other, what are some of the possibilities. And there is still very few destinations that are open and, and showcase those possibilities and what they could evolve and become progressively over time. So at Sandbox, we are still a platform that is in beta. We provide like content creation tool, a 3D editor, a map, a marketplace, a no-code game maker, and even a game client that allows you to access experiences. We are open for a limited period of time where we showcase during seasons, so like time limited event featuring like a great amount of curated content from both brands and user generated content. And uh, we're very attached to showcase like concretely what the metaverse has to offer and what is this new format of entertainment. 
It's not just gaming. It's not just about socializing. It's a great mix of both where people come to discover, to learn, to attend virtual shows, virtual concerts, or even like social hubs, dance clubs, maybe visit an art gallery or museum. And also like complete quests, complete challenge, progress, explore one land to another at a time. And, um, and want to come back the next day and the next day and the next day because they are having fun, because they enjoy making new brands and having activities with their avatars because they are rewarded for doing so. So that are like some key aspects that I believe will make the metaverse really accessible. And so far it's true that uh, Meta, the rebranding of Facebook into Meta gave a lot of spotlight about one year ago. It was in October, 2021 but hasn't yet convinced everyone because it put too much emphasis on like the metaverse being only on VR, which is wrong. Like the metaverse is going to be on any platform and device. It could be mobile, it could be web browser, it could be desktop, PC and Mac, console, AR and VR. It would be all of those platforms. And the second is like forgot too much about like content and great experiences that drive people into the metaverse, which at Sandbox, thanks to the, the 400 brands we have, and like the million of users already registered with the wallet and, and the fantastic community of creators that is already building on our platform, we've been able to showcase more concretely, successfully, like the last alpha season three had 17 million visits in total. Some of the most popular experiences were either like the Gucci vault or the experience for Warner Music or the Rabbits. Cool stuff. People want, want to, people want to see, people want to explore, people want to use and co-create their presence uh, on their land with those brands and taking the content, mixing it, remixing it. So the future of the metaverse is heavily around content, user-generated, uh, made by the community, uh, around like ownership. True digital ownership is essential to build the metaverse and allow that vision of users moving from one to another, thanks to interoperability and, and, I, um, and multi-platform. Yeah, you mentioned music, you mentioned number of users, you mentioned, uh, um, you know, holding, you mentioned content. What are other differentiators versus other metaverses that are out are competing uh, with you? What differentiates Sandbox? So, well, you, you can really set apart two things, like the open metaverse, which is composed of many web-free blockchain-based virtual world. You can come like Decentraland, Subium Space, uh, Voxels, Upland, Spatial, Spaces, and a few other. Each one of them have like different technology, sometimes different use case and audiences. But all of them are based on a technology that enables users indeed to take their content from one to another through their wallet to sell it on marketplaces outside of those games. That's really the open metaverse. On the other side, you have centralized closed wall garden platforms, web two platform that are so-called metaverses, but still have those strong limitations where like the content owned or made by user is still restricted of being only used on those platform. So like Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, Meta with Horizon, just to name a few, are second life, are still like the centralized virtual world with great amount of audiences. So we see them as our competitors, but not yet the benefit of like true digital ownership and the seamless transfer of value that uh, like that will define the future of the meta. And we are seeing an evolution, like uh, recently has been announced the Metaverse Standard Forum, meaning which a lot of Web2 companies have, including Meta, Microsoft, Adobe, Roblox, Epic have joined. And that's being joined by the Open Metaverse Alliance, the OMA3. So we have all like technical working group to define the future of like how we're enable interoperability of content for the benefit of users, no matter like on web two or web three blockchain or non-blockchain based uh, platforms. Yeah, I wanted to about uh, the interoperability. And then you mentioned a little bit, I don't know if you can go even more. How can we, you know, what's your vision? How will we be jumping and collaborating and integrating? Because this is a kind of uh, 
a hassle at this point of time. Because the way it is working, it is not interoperable. You know, you have Sandbox, we have this one and this one. Maybe the NFTs has started or helped us more into integrating this. But in the future, how can I jump from uh, PUBG, for example, or any other game, and then, you know, into a Sandbox and from Sandbox maybe to another Sandbox, uh, another uh, Metaverse, you know, because I think this is where the future should be integrated altogether. It doesn't matter what's the application. In the end of the day, it's running somewhere where it can do that integration. So that's really the promise, and that's where, but it's also the challenge. Like, we understand, like, there is a, a certain number of challenges, both technical, but not only, related to facilitate or to enable that feature for the end user which is one, like understanding the format of data, that spatial representation of objects. So typically I have an avatar that is a 3D character that can use my identity. How do we recognize that that asset that you have in your wallet is an avatar across all those different worlds? How do we represent it either similarly or with um, a representation that still uh, look like it, but adapt it into the aesthetic of each destination uh, virtual world? How do we ensure it still keeps all the animation, all the content, even the skills that you have acquired, because maybe you spent hours to level up that avatar. So all your progression, all your reputation as well, should be able to be transported from one world to another. Right now, the Metaverse Center Forum is putting a lot of emphasis on agreeing on, on file format standards. So already like the first layer, which is like representation. Uh, GLTF as a 3D file format. I don't want to get too much into the technical details because maybe the audience is not indeed, so indeed. interested into it, but GLTF and USD format, which is like universal scene descriptor. You take a 3D space environment, think of it like a web page, like HTML. How do we describe the content into it so we understand logically what's in it and what can be done with it across any different virtual world application, almost like browsers of web pages. All of that being uh, on track and starting working group. Once we have those standards, it will be easier to uh, hopefully uh, like facilitate the transfer. And then there is all the, at the end, like, every application should decide how they interpret the data and what kind of benefit they give to the owner of those assets. In Web3, it's more natural. Like in blockchain gaming, we're already thinking, oh, if you own a board ape, if you own a crypto kitty NFT, if you own a card from SoRare or an avatar or land in sandbox, well, you can benefit from that in my game. It became like a user acquisition strategy. It became a way to attract like valuable users because we can see they have like the kind of NFT that we want. And uh, we were more inclined to this kind of design. But in the traditional gaming and tech design, this is a whole new paradigm that takes a bit of time to understand how it's going to impact the business model, the user acquisition, and overall the potential. And yes, if, even if there is like a little overhead of cost, on technology or design to implement it, I believe like ultimately the, the benefits that an industry as a whole can benefit can take from that is still going to be larger and make us less dependent on centralized actor for the discovery of content, the acquisition of user, the value growing of community and user wallets. Yeah, very interesting uh, that uh, you know. You have to mention some of the technicalities, but still, uh, you have to understand them where we are going. This is important. I'll, I'll jump to my other question. I was with a United Nations Arab uh, SME Summit uh, earlier this month, and, and I was talking about the metaverse for the region. And this region and that space went to Dubai later on. Uh, they were very intrigued with that. We're talking about future technologies from blockchain to metaverse to so many other things that goes there. And they are eager to learn. But I got one question always was about privacy and human protection in a virtual world that is really growing day by day. And then we started seeing some initiatives being happening there. What's your take on that, on that uh, front? I think it's... 
first of all, it makes sense that there is so much general interest from like SMEs, Fortune 500 companies, top entertainment brands, celebrity music artists, and also even government or regulators about the matter. In Sandbox, we have over 400 brands, which include like uh, music artists like Snoop Dogg, Steve Aoki, but also media like Time Magazine, South China Morning Post, music label or Warner Music, but also like PwC, HSBC as a bank, TBS from Singapore, or the Dubai Spara, which is a regulator who acquire land to understand being in the space and to create experiences for the users to offer them like more ways to connect with them in a meaningful manner, to give them value and rewards, to educate them, to offer them fun and entertainment. The, but we want to do that. Like we want to have like users who enjoy spending time alone or together in social uh, spaces, also in a safe way. So it's important that we ensure that our like moderation and there is like term of use on the platform that protects every user to be able to enjoy uh, those experiences uh, in a safe way and not be not exposed to inappropriate content or inappropriate chat. So that's why we put in place AI based moderation solution for like text uh, conversation. For example, we have in game moderators. So people who are not just monitoring screens, but are physically, uh, virtually physically present through their avatar to those world to make sure like there's good behaviors and also animate those community to drive them to do like cool and fun ac actions. Uh, and we're also looking at um, typically other frameworks that ensure that um, there is a general education of the audience around what is a good behavior. Typically yesterday or earlier this week, what like the global day around like um, cyber um, bullying online and, and uh, like uh, threats against women's violence as well and domestic violence, which are like two strong causes that needs education and virtual world should be no exception to uh, participate into that general education and make sure that behaviors are appropriate online. Uh, great. Uh, just hold on. So uh very interesting and then i think the more and more adoption and more and more initiatives that is also mentioned there's an initiative currently happening regarding the metaverse privacy and uh, protection uh now we jump what's the new, new business model of advertising will it be a traditional business model or ad sharing or something can you give us because i think there's many companies that started venturing into this space trying to take a piece of it, trying to maybe create, maybe you already created a business model, uh, especially now with block availability where, you know, it's on chain, you can track it, you can understand more what's happening. It's no longer at the same ways uh, it used to be. What's your take on the future of advertising, especially in the metaverse? Uh, that's a very good question. And I think, yeah, and you're right asking it is basically uh, I think like every new platform, any new format has also developed its own codes in terms of like um, advertising and promotion of content. So advertising needs to be native to like the platform where it's going to be displayed to be relevant, to attract the audience and engage them to like, oh, I that looks great. I want to try it. I want to click through it. I'm interested into exploring it. What we're seeing, and I think like the most common mistake that most uh, advertisers would think is like, okay, the metaverse is going to turn into like this giant Times Square. We'll put banners everywhere or photos and videos. But this is not a great user experience typically. Like we don't want the metaverse to turn into a giant Times Square. We don't want to have like large screen, like capturing people's attention until there's too many and they, they don't do anything to people's attention anymore. We want to build like an advertising format that is native to the platform, meaning like in Sandbox, for example, like the best way to be in a platform is to, to understand the codes, to own land, but also to, to know, know how lands are being built. You build them with 3D objects, 3D buildings, with characters. 
So like a best way to promote an experience is maybe like for sh from showcasing and creating a quest that involve that character for people who want to taste a little bit and want to continue playing that quest or that game into the other land. It could be a portal as well. Like portal is a natural way to navigate through lands in the metaverse and into 3D world. So like a great portal that is designed as a volumetric object with a uh, visual effect with content around it that when you see it, you can already guess what's going to be behind that portal and make you want to go through to actually to, to be, to, to go and explore that experience that's being promoted. For me, those are more natural way, more native way that follow the code of the platform. And another great way, like when I see those collaboration that brands are doing or communities are doing, like typically when, uh, the rabbit from Ubisoft arrived in Sandbox. They not only built their experience, but they also invaded and broke some other lands. So you could find the rabbits scattered around many other experiences. And that was a great way. Like you play to like a, an experience, you discover a museum, and then you find rabbits in the middle. That's intriguing. That's a way like, all right, I want to discover the story. I want to play around them. Why are they here? So it requires a bit of creative design as well for being like really successful in promoting content in the metaverse. Yeah, great. Now I'll jump into the financial aspect of things. And I got asked this question many times because it is coming from, uh, I would say from Meta, you know, seeing all of those investments being pumped now in the metaverse, do we really need those investments? Uh, you know, it's a general question that I get everywhere. Is it too much? Are we spending too much on something that is virtual? That you know, it's not physical. What's the business use case? What's 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 you know? There's a lot of questions there. But do we really need those investments, or, or actually, you have another point of view uh, of how we can take things uh, further? So the way I see it is definitely first like. Uh, Meta hasn't done a great job yet to release content that showcase properly uh, the potential of the metaverse. Like so that's something maybe they're still working on to build a great experience that could attract users. The second is like the, the business model. Um, many brands have seen like by being on social media, like they have entered this um, this model where like the Post content, like people attention is very short span and, and like only gets is maybe likes and impression. And they have to pay to the platform like Google, Facebook, typically to attract more audience to their product. So in a way, they've lost that relationship with their client, with their fan, with their customer and to the platforms which collect all those data and all those users to become fans of their page or profile page. And they are uh, forced to spend back a portion and a greater portion of their revenue to attract back those audience into their own uh, product page and so on, which is crazy in a way. Web3 wants to give more power back to the brand, to the user, and reinstall like, that relationship that brands can have simply because they have access uh, user are in control of their wallet. So you can airdrop an NFT into a wallet. You can offer value for the wallet and you can track that relationship over time. As you see on chain, uh, all how the people are connecting to their wallet, what kind of transaction they are doing. You can engage them offering like experiences that could be gated to access specific collection of content. And you can reward them by offering like real utility, real use case. Uh, for their NFTs, typically in Sandbox, like we are a platform that empower people to be more creative, to benefit from that creativity. Um, we reward people for their engagement through NFTs. So that I think that brands would look strongly for. And the business model of Sandbox is essentially based on like the royalties. So after we sold all the land, after we sold all the sands, everything will be in the end of the community. And as a platform, we only collect 5% of royalties on um, any transaction from one user to another. So when two users sell to each other, we take 5% and the creator or, or the owner of the asset will keep 
the 95% for himself, creating like a virtuous um, economy, a creator economy on the platform. And us optimizing our model towards like creating value for all the stakeholders who contribute to make this world a living place, a fun place to be and growing it as well. Uh, great. Uh, thank you for, for this. Now, uh, I want to understand more, more about the trending uh, sandbox NFT on OpenSea and any new features coming soon other than this one also that, that you're going to be explaining now. There's definitely uh, trends on top. And actually, it's a great timing because I was checking just yesterday um, over OpenSea and specifically Polygon and the Sandbox Lands came out as a number one collection um, yesterday following the California Dreaming Landfill. So like, it shows like people still understand that the categories of NFTs that are valuable could be very useful behind like virtual land. Uh, we're still seeing a lot of creativity and art um, uh, on OpenSea. So it's still like the most mainstream marketplace to discover great content and understand like what can be more or less valuable uh, for users. I, I see like Lens Protocol typically became first and see uh, content related like unstable domains as well or games like League of Kingdom. It's great to see Great, a, a greater diversity into like towards the end of the year in the categories of NFTs than uh, we've seen before uh, earlier this year, which was maybe too much overload of like profile picture uh, related collection that we're still uh, holding to show more promise for uh, the users. Now, before we start winding and uh, going into the last section. Um, I just want to ask you about Dubai. What do you see? Because you were in Dubai last month, you attended Jitex and many other events. You were one of the main sponsors of also of uh, Jitex, uh, uh, whole uh, stadium. Uh, just want to understand from you, what do you think about the strategy of, uh, the metaverse of Dubai and what are your take on this? Well, um, um, I think like Dubai with the VARA regulator has been uh, one of the uh, like most forward thinking um, partner and regulator around their strategy to enter the metaverse, to showcase the possibility and, and to push forward a very comprehensive framework for all like local actors that tell them what they can do what they can do and then provide more freedom for entrepreneurs to act and grow their business higher and so on. So it's definitely um, like uh, one of the pioneer and, and uh, the team has a great mindset. Actually today, uh, um, November 12th, yeah, it should be today that we're going to open the Dubai's first experience in the sandbox for people to uh, come and see for themselves. Uh, learn more, see which are the projects that are already regulated. I also think that from what I've seen at Guidex, it's like a huge trade show, a uh, lot of people attending, enormous interest from not only Dubai, but the whole region of MENA region, extending even to India, Pakistan, and beyond around possibilities of the metaverse. So quite exciting to see like this boning ecosystem. And the fact that the government has set clear objectives, like we need to reach 40,000 people by end of next year working in the metaverse, that sets like great guidelines as well for like then all the institutions, the government bodies, the entrepreneurs, and even like regular uh, people like are not yet involved into the space. When they hear that, they get curious, they want to be involved. So that, that trigger a whole industry behind in a very positive manner, I think. Doesn't resolve all the challenge of how we are going to achieve it operationally and so on, but makes people around the table to talk about it and figure out the solution to follow the big plan. It will come little bit by little bit. And this is my last question now, which is which goes in the same direction. Uh, what does it need for mass adoption in this space? 
I think still needs like technology to keep improving, but also more importantly, um, content, great content, content that is fun, that at the same level of like feature and technology that existing centralized virtual world like Roblox, like Fortnite, which gather hundreds of million of you, if we're able to provide experiences that are even more fun, more engaging, and offer the benefit of true digital ownership of like owning your identity through your avatar and moving from one world of the others, then I think like there would be no more questions about like uh, which uh, platform is more beneficial. And we're seeing already that new Gen Z moving and understanding fully the idea that digital assets are are valuable, uh, like they prefer to own virtual goods, digital goods over physical goods. They prefer to live virtual experiences with their friends rather than physical experiences. So they already understood like it's not about physical or virtual. It's like no matter where you are, like there are creative possibilities. You make real connection, real emotion with people, and you own content that if you're proud, proud, proud to own, it is as valuable as a physical object. And that I think like that will keep growing progressively. There is no turning back on that idea. And uh, we'll see from there uh, a growing amount of users entering the space progressively and being fully web free native. Uh, thank you for being with us today. What is your final recommendation to our uh, listeners, viewers? Was it on YouTube, podcast, and all of the channels that we are on? What is that last thing you want to recommend for them to maybe start, maybe change, maybe adapt, maybe... Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what's your last recommendation? Well, I think, like, let's keep building let's keep focusing on the right uh, aspect of like technology is great technology can empower people and be beneficial experiences fun games useful product will drive people toward those technology let's build like product that have value for real community that have meaning let's continue to have this open mindset and collaborative mindset within web three. That's really a strong differentiator with web two. And uh, let's continue to educate more and more users, invite them to test our product, invite them to create an avatar and try sandbox to see by themselves the possibilities. So hopefully like we'll get closer to that vision over the years. So uh, I'd like to thank you a lot for uh, taking your time and being with us. I know it was a uh, busy schedule. Uh, I would like to thank you again for uh, being hosted on the X. I hope, uh, without further ado, Hi. I really, hello, Maria. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, this exclusive uh, interview. Can you hear me, Maria? Yes. Yes, yes I yeah, can hear excellent. you. So I you. And I, uh, I really hope. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. I hope you enjoyed this exclusive interview with uh, Sebastian Bourguet, the co-founder of The Sandbox. Uh, he gave us a lot of tips, a lot of new exclusive news. It's an amazing interview. He's an amazing person. Also, I uh, met him in uh, Dubai uh, during JITAX. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of building. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in the metaverse, especially on Sandbox, where VARA, the first regulator in the world to move in 
to a virtual metaverse and they chose the sandbox. So it's great to see uh, such initiatives being, you know, built, such initiatives, sorry, uh, such, such initiatives being uh, realized. And with that, I will jump into directly with our guest, Maria. Maria, I would love you to introduce yourself to our guests so that they know better who they are, and then we'll directly continue there. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Rudy, for inviting me. I'm an ambassador at Finiverse, of one of the greatest fintech slash webs, not only in Asia, but also worldwide. Week. And Finiverse is right now going for a high tech let's say, uh, Web3 conferences, uh, um, building ecosystem into ecosystem more, uh, assault, very valuable businesses. They're MC because uh, I'm very often an inferences moderator and, and um, I'm also at Finiverse. And, and additionally, I'm a station of Ukraine and I'm also like dealing with from this perspective yeah so yeah. Uh, maria uh, we're having i don't know why uh, your voice is cutting uh, it, it, it's good but it has it keeps on going and coming so i don't know if you are okay uh, can working... i maybe, maybe i'll try without my, my earpods i don't know maybe if also uh, sometimes because the, the platform uh got affected with the power of your uh, computer if you're using you're so many things using so many things yeah, so I don't know if you can close. Okay, now so I can you hear me right now? No. It's coming and going. I don't know what is the issue. <laughs> Maybe okay. if you log out and log in uh, also. If you close Chrome and then reopen it and then join us again, if you don't mind. Meanwhile, I'll do a small intro. So uh, really, thank you, Maria, for uh, for joining us. She'll be with us within one minute. So we have to survive technicalities. What can we do? Uh, this is our world. This is how it works. This is how things uh, get really uh, get us going. Challenges, and then we keep on creating and innovating out of them. So, uh, with that, uh, you know, today Maria, I'll introduce her a little bit more. Uh, she is one of the nominated uh, women leaders on the top twenty-five women in fintech and blockchain. And then we are happy that uh, the judges. Our D judges, uh, you know, uh, were able to select her because she is leading a lot of projects in the space of uh, blockchain. And then we will be hearing from her more and more as we move on. So uh, she's an amazing person, amazing leader, amazing builder, uh, active on all fronts, wherever you want. She's there uh, trying to uh, push and, of course, uh, we are early adopters. We're trying to push as much as we can the blockchain space. And let's welcome one of our top 25 women again, hopefully this time with a better connection. Hi. Hi, once again, everyone. Um, hi, Rudy. And hi, Rudy. Better. Bit better, yes. Let's go. Okay. So if, if it's needed, I, may, I, I can introduce myself once again. Um, uh, Please do. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, again, I'm Maria Bovchok. I'm ambassador at Finiver of famous Hong Kong FinTech Week. And um, right now, there will be much more FinTech slash Web3 amazing conference. I'm their ambassador, MC, at podcast host. So I'm also hosting I'm also conferences abroad. Um, we also right now doing a world, uh, waves in the Finiverse, so we're going to, to tell more our um, amazing tech founders. And also, additionally, I'm ambassador at blockchain, at blockchain, and I'm dealing with VCs and startups. So this is like in a nutshell. And thank you so much, Rudy, for inviting me. Uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you for being with us. I think. Uh... Uh, being selected uh, part of the top 25 women. By the way, uh, I appreciate that as well. 
I have nothing to do with that. All of them are uh, judges related, and this is where I was thanking them. And at, I wanted, you know, we were leading this, but we wanted to be by women for women, uh, supporting other women, and then trying. The most important part is to uh, lead and to inspire other women. So with that comes my quick question for you. What does this nomination mean? And then how can we take this nomination and winning this nomination, being selected part of the top 25 forward for others to join in this space? Well, first of all, I still for uh, that you, you actually introduced uh, this nomination. You're actually helping to uh, bring awareness about, about women in this. Be grateful to, to ladies who voted for me because for me it's really really important. I'll tell you that. That it really, first of all, it helps you to understand is you're moving right, like in the right direction, and uh, you can see how UAE in general has embraced me. Well, I mean, uh, because I've been always active in Ukrainian blockchain community from the beginning, and that's that's why okay, like quite a lot I was doing. Um, this with as well um talented people in the space that i for me it's very important as for journalists to know what is happening and that's why when i got into by um uh, I, I got into by like less than two years ago so it will be like two years almost i got so, so many again uh, so grateful that i met as well quite a lot of worthy and very um, knowledgeable people in this space a lot of them um, um, i'm also so like, like so fascinated by some of them. as you were discussing this earlier with the metaverse strategy and everything what is going on in this space. dubai is truly is the blockchain hub one of the blockchain hubs in the world we believe that this will be one of the most important places to be at to be in in all of the developments as i can see despite all of the like some some said crypto world uh we still can see that the ecosystem in dubai is thriving We're grateful to be in the in the middle of it and i believe because of that uh was nominated for uh top 25 women in uh, in my case I'm dealing with fintech, um, mostly with Web3, but also, as I said, like I'm dealing with very grateful again. And I, I believe it, it will help me um, to bring awareness of what is happening here um, to help as well, bring the, help to build like the healthy ecosystem and uh, to welcome more competitive, I believe, um, startups in the field and gain more and more. So, as I said, grateful to the nomination. I'm also reading the Golden Visa. So I'm so uh, happy to be in Dubai and I'm so happy to be very um, interesting, I would say. One of the most interesting for me, I could just talk about it. Yeah, I think uh, we are living in an interesting city. Uh, yes. Dubai is uh, okay. full of uh, vibrant uh, financial technologies and uh, blockchain, crypto, and so on. Metaverse now is is a is a big yeah. thing. Uh, so we are privileged to be in this city, and then trying to really uh, advance and trying to uh, lead. You know, before possibly we needed to go to UK or uh, Silicon Valley or New York. Uh, and now we have our own region, which is trying to play this uh, role for uh, for uh, the region, of course. Uh, so I guess it's, it's really important. Now, I want to ask you another question is, how can we really get more women involved, in your opinion? Uh, but before that, are there enough women involved? Because during our, I want, I want your opinion. I, I will tell you what we found out. First, we found out that the geographical location is mostly in UAE. They are, uh, all of the women are based in the UAE, mm -hmm. regardless of nationalities, but the initiatives are coming from UAE. 
Uh, the second mm -hmm. thing, there's not enough women in this space because we really suffered in general to have even the nomination on, as a total. Uh, there, mm -hmm. There's a lot of women involved in technology, but not enough women in those special two fields. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you think about this and what's your opinion? How can we involve more women? So, uh, you know, what, what I wanted as well to comment on regarding this is that, you know, also um, Dr. Mervan from Dubai Blockchain Center, he um, kind of told me like, um, no, nobody would like think from outside that so many women are actually working in IT already here. So, and also when we are talking about fintech and web3 um i believe that we can join it just recently there was decipher conference and they were women in web3 breakfast so there were, were only like women in web3 like i wouldn't say that the amount is, is a small one we had like a tables like all of all, all of them there were only women Word slash fintech, and I'll tell you the more I'm also living in the you know, this amazing women who are working in fintech, in DHC, in other in other company fintech companies. And for me, like I I will need probably more, but I wouldn't say that the percentage is so. Of course, if we, we analyze it like throughout different countries, like. Um, in different regions, the percentage will be different. But you know, as, as far as as well, I can like uh, as it, like Ukraine slash UAE because I before that I was living in Ukraine. I can, I can see that actually throughout these years, and I'm, I'm in crypto, let's say in Web three, and I can see that like from the point of view of uh, obviously the percentage of women is getting bigger, and from this perspective one of the most fields is marketing which I, I think it's obvious and I'll explain to you why it doesn't mean if you tech talents like women tech talents obviously we have I'll try, try to explain it from the point of view of, uh, like from Ukraine then slash here T talents in Ukraine still most of the IT universities uh, I mean uh, universities they're usually more popular among men. So men are mostly. So that's why we can see them mostly on the tech side. And it doesn't mean that they're not welcoming women. It, it only depends like what exactly are you choosing whenever you're here. So later on, as um, a lot of the companies are, are growing, obviously on the tech side with men. But if you analyze it, uh, when we're talking, Talking about talking about different PR side, marketing side, it's obviously women, and it's like number is getting like bigger and bigger, and it also concerns not only in Ukraine but obviously here, and it's obvious women in this case, and of course I'm not, I don't want to, do, but um, in marketing, very often you have to be very, very flexible. So for women, they they tend to be more flexible. I'm not saying about but again. All of them are wise, but this is what the tendency that I could see. So um, we don't need more women, and we definitely need them more. At least speaking, I don't see such a problem as they are. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they're trying to. Uh, women are not exactly uh, that men in country are not that welcome. Indeed, that men, men are trying actually to invite more women work in this, in this big, uh, whatever role position you prefer more in this case it doesn't matter like you there's some criteria so you just need to like it and whenever you like it you can definitely invite you so i so i'll tell you frankly from my perception as i see this such a big deal especially when we're talking about web3 which is trying to become trying to bring more awareness or like among other people they are welcoming like it first of all and they just need to probably learn about this but see the lack 
I just see that this is like, again, with the time, uh, the number. So, yeah, um, I, I believe that there will be much more panels, not only like, let's say, three men, one woman, but there will be more and more where the number of participants, um, male and female. Thank you for that. Uh, I just want to, um, if you want for a minute uh, to give me, uh, if you want a summary or a last uh, recommendation or something so that we end this section. Uh, I appreciate for your time, for joining us today and being with us and waiting for half an hour in the back, uh, uh, back room. So right. <laughs> really appreciate all of this, uh, but uh, we need to continue our uh, segment. So with that, I'll give you the mic sure. and then. Uh... Well, um, I'm going to say again that uh, um, whenever somebody that you know me or you don't, uh, you're welcome to add me LinkedIn, Maria Vovchok. I'm usually more active um, whenever you, um, in this case, organize the amazing shop. Let's connect. Let's discuss it. And as I said earlier, I'm sure that with it and we can actually make this uh, space, I believe, uh, more like safer, definitely, because um, we still take that are happening. We need to make sure that all of the people are enjoying the space and they're seeing the benefits of DeFi, decentralized finance for. Uh, so I'm also so happy to be here when we talk about conferences, CSI, journalist side in this space, please. You're welcome to join me. Welcome. Yeah. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. You can follow Maria at social media on Maria Vofshok. Uh, Vofshok, yes. if I'm not mistaken, uh, oh, yeah. on social media and on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram and so on. Uh, Maria, I appreciate you being with us again. Thank you all again. Thank uh, you for inviting me. Yes, we are starting to drop our NFTs, so uh, we will get back to you. I don't know if you filled the form or not. I didn't look. Uh, if you did, you will soon. Uh, we will uh, be dropping those uh, NFTs. Uh, yeah, we would I like to it. thank. Yeah, we will uh, thank a lot our favorite artist from Kuwait. Uh, uh, uh whoa uh, <laughs> i totally forgot her name well, her her small name actually i i remember her name uh, amin shuruk al amin wow no it's not shuruk al amin wow what uh if she's gonna no me, she's gonna she's gonna go mad no now <laughs> i really hope i don't and also really frankly Rudy, i'm trying like i'm never like taking person because uh, you might like sometimes you're dealing with yeah. A lot, a lot of information. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, her name is Shuruk Alamin. I'm totally out. Yeah. So, so I was right. You actually remember? I had, for, for, a second, for a second, I was doubting myself. So thank you again for Shuruk Alamin for all of your support uh, and uh, helping us with this. Uh, you're an amazing artist. Yeah. And thank you, Maria, again for joining. And we'll see you soon uh, on a lot of other initiatives because this is how it works. Uh, now we are connected and then we'll connect for more. Thank you, Maria, again, and uh, keep on inspiring. Thank you so much. And I really I also like, I I'm excited, we'll want to evaluate the, the art for sure. Thank you. Bye bye. So, with that, uh, we will continue our schedule and our uh, program.
So uh, thank you again for being with us. I think uh, between Maria and Sebastian, those are really amazing guests. Sebastian is the founder uh, of the Sandbox, amazing platform, amazing metaverse. I think it's the number one metaverse in the world. Uh, do watch out, do watch this episode from the beginning to watch again. Um, Sebastian interview. We will be posting it by itself uh, in the space. So, uh, awaiting day, my dear friend. Um, hold on, sorry for that. Uh, we will. Okay, so awaiting day. Let's start a little bit of some of the news and. Here we go. So again, we had Maria and then make sure uh, not to fall in any fraud. Why? Because it is very important. And unfortunately, I want to confess today, I fell for the first time for a fraud case. Unfortunately, it wasn't a big amount, but unfortunately I got compromised uh, on my MetaWask wallet and I was able to handle it, but uh, I lost uh, a, a small amount, a small amount, but enough to uh, do a gap or a dent in my personal and in my uh, in my belief of how things work. Uh, it was funny. There was a drop for a certain ledger NFT, and uh, I received one of the messages on uh, WhatsApp, which directs me to Twitter. It was everything is legit on this case. But I for that one second, when I logged into Twitter, I received notification that someone tagged me. So I switched to this tag, and it was the same page plus uh, one letter. So this is where I, mess, I messed up. And I continued my mint from there. And unfortunately, uh, the guys that they played with the smart contract, they played it in a way where if you, uh, and I, I checked three times before signing the authentication on the website, and it has all of the website logos of whoever is dropping the mint, and everything was there. So I signed the contract allowing the website to have access to my uh, MetaMask wallet. And then when I wanted to pay, the smart contracts reads how much money you have or how much Ethereum you have in your smart contract and adds it automatically for you to transfer it to the uh, fraudster that is trying to attack me. So I fell a victim of this, and that's my first victim over the seven past years being victimized in this space. And I lost all of the funds in my wallet. As I said, it, it made a dent, of course, but it wasn't big because I follow a strategy which, meta, especially on MetaMask, because I hear a lot of fraud happening there, um, that I always keep it to the minimum. Whatever I want to buy, I just transfer to it. Within the next two, three minutes, it's there. And then I do my purchase. So I wanted to mint uh, an NFT ledger. A physical ledger to uh, nft and then unfortunately they emptied my wallet uh, within that second which was from twitter i received a legit my friends whoever they wanted me to mint their ledger but when i logged into twitter somebody tagged me and then i pressed and then it was the same look and feel and then i went to the website again my problem is i didn't check uh, it was very early in the morning, and then I fell a victim. So with that, let's continue. Tay is with us. Let's continue directly and then hand over uh, the platform to Tay. Uh, we are having Global Metaverse Carnival between uh, yesterday, today. Uh, please do join. It's, it was an amazing. I had a keynote speech, and I had a panel. Uh, they will be in December 11 and 12, December Gulf Blockchain Summit, which is happening within uh, early next week. World FinTech Summit happened in 
Saudi, it was an amazing one, and also the Middle East Lending Summit. So let me welcome Tay on the platform quickly and directly. And here we go. Tahiyati Elak Rudy Ula Jamia Mutavin. Hala Hala Betay. Get I'm Khaburun and for the first time. What an a victim of uh, impersonation and over the seven years, even though seven years, but uh, I'm not happy about it uh, because the way, but see it, but the way, the way they saw it, I wasn't happy about it. Uh, my trick was the social media, and I received a Twitter from my friend that they wanted me to mend, and they were minting physical ledgers to NFT. Yeah. I wanted to get it. I know it's branded. I wanted to get it as a nice gift to friends. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I went to Twitter and then I was tagged by somebody, same name as them. So by mistake, I went and I checked whoever tagged me. But now I have the same page as, as the same post. But the only difference is one small letter. And this is where uh, always check, <laughs> always check. 10 times check, but I follow a strategy on uh, MetaMask. That's why it was a dent. It wasn't something serious. I follow a strategy on Meta on uh, MetaMask that my MetaMask wallet is always empty. Uh, so I only transfer yeah. only the amount, whatever I want to mint or whatever I want to create. Other than that, it's always meant because I know that MetaMask is always involved in something one way or another. Maybe you signed something in a website or whatever. Yalla. خير تي كله خير كله خير لا 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 هي بس ثاني هلا هاني نو نو المهم رودي من من هيك قصص انه الانسان يتعلم ودائما للمره الثانيه تيك ات ايزي و اولويز دبل تشيك اور ماي دير Friend, brother, co-founder, and the CTO of uh, Flus Diamond Billy. Uh, double check. كل شيء قبل ما تكتبه send. لو كان email حتى قبل ما تفتحه double check. ما بتتخيل أديش the amount of uh, phishing emails that we get uh, from legit brands, مثل Microsoft, مثل uh, Dropbox, مثل كتير من day to day. Platforms that you use, لازم لو أنت عم تستخدم Microsoft every day, you're expecting an email from them or في شيء subscription بدو يجدد دائما 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 نشيك على links ونشيك على الأساس اللي عم نفتحها وعم نعملها download, especially the crypto people. And the crypto people عندهم one step extra لازم يعملوها. Uh, we were as well almost fished for a very large amount of money, uh, like recently. Um, yeah, you always have to be careful, uh, Rudy. Khasatan bi ayad halla tiktar the scams. The world, kila bata tishtri online, kila ami kabis, bahad ami talla. So uh, any anyway, it was a heavy week for uh, crypto. Uh, حنسمع شوية أخبار عن هيدا الأسبوع نحن عم نقرب رودي على آخر السنة ويك 49 we still have three weeks till end of the year و the crypto space is showing no sign of recovery من هون لآخر السنة ال reading is totally different ف We're excited to share with you some news and some numbers uh, this week. Great. I'm going to the presentation and uh, here we go. All is yours. Thank you, Rudy. And welcome again to all the listeners on Crypto Talks. We're in the 49 week, week 49. The crypto markets still, I'm opening the prices live. بعدنا على ال 17000 سبورت ليفلز بيتكوين برايس بهاللحظه 16815 ايثيريوم 1229 بي ان بي 284 85 
Cardano, uh, Polygon, Polkadot, Litecoin كانوا من الستيبل uh, like stable cryptocurrencies in terms of price fluctuations بآخر سبعة أيام يمكن ما هذا Polygon شفنا ارتفاع بسيط 5.4% من سبعة أيام لليوم ولكن الكريبتو ماركت كاب ان جنرال بعد تحت التريليون دولار and uh, we're 875 billion dollar at the moment الدومينانس سوري الدومينانس للبيتكوين 36.9% ليش هيدا مهم؟ البيتكوين دومينانس دائما بيعطينا انديكيتورز هل حنشوف الت سيزون او حنرجع نشوف بيتكوين رالي بالالت سيزون ال الفوكس للانفستر وللتريدر بيكون على الالت كوينز الالت كوينز مثل لايت كوين لايت كوين يلي ذكرنا الاسبوع الماضي عم نشوف الهافينج تبعها عم يقرب سو يوجولي بيفور ذا هافينج بيصير في لايك سمول رالي هيدا الرالي اولريدي صار على لايت كوين ولكن they're expecting Litecoin to be around hundred dollars due to the upcoming uh, uh, events. غير الأسعار for this week we saw an interesting report من Glassnode. Glassnode كان عم يحكي عن a يعني عم Glassnode كان عم يقول لأول مرة بيصير في خسائر كثير كبيره بعالم الديجيتال اسيتس مع انه هو نحن ما صرنا 10 سنين بعد از توتال ا توتال ايمرجنج ماركت ولكن ان دوز باست 10 12 ييرز ما صار في لوسز ان ذا كريبتو سبيس قد ما صار ان 2022 اف تي اكس خلت الماركت تخسر 4.4 بليون دولار عم نحكي عن البيتكوين uh, in 24 hours compared to تيرا لونا جون 2022 the market lost 700 million dollar a day for the next two weeks after the تيرا لونا crash so uh, what are we seeing ال uh, The hodlers are losing money, especially min May 2021 until today. كل شيء في fresh capital fed in maha. وكأنه الماركت عم يصير فيها detox. وهيدا ال detox mainly كان من كل شيء bad experiences and bad practices that we saw. من FTX, من Terra Luna وغيره. بعد جينيسيس ما في اي معلومات مؤكده عن امكانيه افلاس ام ايه ولا لا لانه هيدا كمان هيدا الشيء بياثر على اسعار الكريبتو والبيتكوين مستقبلا خاصه اذا صار في اشهار لعمليه افلاس جينيسيس سو وي مايت ذن سي بيتكوين ات ايفن 10000 دولار بهالحاله هاي ولكن خلينا نبلش رودي ب تفاصيل هيدا الاسبوع uh, بدايه مع uh, the altcoins مثل ما كنا عم نحكي طب بس نشوف بيتكوين دومينانس عم يوطى وبيتكوين دومينانس فينا نقراه من كوين جيكو اول سطر تحت كلمه كوين جيكو دغري مكتوب قد ايه في كوينز قد ايه في اكسشينجز قد ايه في ماركت كاب سوري وقد ايه في دومينانس على البيتكوين بس تنزل بيتكوين دومينانس بنشوف عاده رالي ان altcoins And according to CryptoCoin news, the uh, crypto whales Leon, they are adding uh, uh, they're adding altcoins to their portfolios. Uh, crypto news, I think they got paid. يحكوا عن هول الالتكوينز بس إني ذكروا IMPT CryptoCoin إلى علاقة بالclimate change. الكوين الثاني اللي نذكر Dash to Trade. A new platform it will offer cryptocurrency investments, uh, tracking, data analysis, strategy building, and uh, other uh, tools and features. We uh, robot era or Taro. Taro, it's a gaming platform. It merges play to earn 
مع ال NFTs so that players can take control of robot companions and they can explore, rebuild and destroy the planet of Taro. شفنا كمان ريا ريا يلي المشروع تبع اسمه كالفاريا كالفاريا كمان is a game it's like a dual game of eternity بصير فيها مبارزات NFT trading cards and you build strategies to go after each other in afterlife inspired world so yeah again I'm not endorsing any of these coins ولكن حط حب حبينا نحط هيدا الخبر to show how uh, usually in altcoin seasons investors appetite for altcoins open up و uh, it might be interesting to take a look at a few um, من بعد الالتكوينز هيدا الاسبوع كان في uh, محاكمه ل ايان فريمان ايان فريمان للناس اللي ما بتعرفوا هو one of the early traders على localbitcoins.com كان يعمل مقابلات مع يعني حدا بده يشتري بيتكوين فور كاش او بده يبيع الـ الـ او معه كاش بده يشتري بيتكوين بيعملوا مقابله كانوا مع ايان فريمان بالستاربكس بمطعم اند بصير في تبادل الكاش للعملات الرقميه للعملات الرقميه الى كاش بنيو هامشاير كان يحط كيوسكس مثل اي تي ام ماشينز كل اي تي ام ماشين عليها الوالت تبعيتها بنعطي فيات او يو اس دولار للاي تي ام ماشين وبتعطينا ان ريتيرن بيتكوين بنعطي بيتكوين للاي تي ام ماشين ان ريتيرن بتعطينا يو اس دولار هيدي العمليه كان عم يشتغل فيها من 2016 ل 2021 لحد ما تم توقيفه تم توقيفه بمداهمه من الاف بي اي ومش بس هو كمان معه مجموعه كان من الاشخاص كانوا يسموا حالهم هن دي كريبتو 6 اتهم هي بيع عملات رقميه بطريقه غير مرخصه وغير شرعيه ولكن الحلو بهيدا الموضوع انه ايان قدر يعرف كيف يتحايل على القانون وقدر يلم بنك ترانسفيرز لمؤسسات هو سجلها بطابع ديني كنائس دور عباده لمثلا يعني كان عندهم مركز ل عبدة الشياطين فيلموا تبرعات تجي المصاري تبرعات على هيدي الحسابات ويصير في تبديل للعملات الرقمية إلى ويوزعوا العملات الرقمية للناس اللي تبرعت بهي دور العبادة سو so, اتهم هي ضمن تويد الأموال مكافحة تسهيل الإرهاب المالي و هيدي التهم بما انه بتشمل مكافحه الارهاب وتمويل الارهاب فيها يكون حبس لمده طويله وغرامه ماليه كثير عاليه بعض الناس بكريبتو 6 في صبيه وحده اخذت اعفاء ولكن الخمس اشخاص الباقيين في ثلاثه منهم قدروا يتفادوا العقوبة السجن واثنين في عندهم عقوبة سجن منهم ايان فريمان هلا ايان فريمان ان دي كريبتو ليبرتاريان سيركلز بيعتبروه ناشط او بطل قومي اذا بدنا ولكن بحسب الاف بي اي هذا الزلمه عم يبيض اموال من ايان فريمان اند جابان جابان بشهر 6 2022 يعني جون 2022 كانت عم تعطي دايركشن لقوانين جديده باليابان بتسمح لتداول العملات الرقميه وبتسمح لتداول العملات الرقميه الثابته ولكن بتحول جديد طرأ بهيدا الاسبوع هيدا التحول عم يقول لا نحن ما بنعطي موافقه لالجوريثميك ستيبل كوينز وكانه المشرع الياباني ما بده يخلي الديفاي سبيس او الاوبن كريبتو سبيس 
يكون منتشر باليابان وخاصة أنه الالغوريثميك ستيبل كوينز حتكون من أكبر المحركات للديسنترلايز فاينانس والدي فاي وورد والويب 3 إن دي فيوتشر لأنه ما عنا الريجولاتوري بارير ليصير في دولار أو عملة ثابتة عم ناخد هون منحة التكنولوجي وعم ناخد منحة ال ال البيتكوين وايت بيبر ان تيرمز اوف بيلدينج ا ديستريبيوتد نتورك اوف موني سو وقت ناخذ هول المبدئين ونحطهم مع بعض بصير عندنا بيئه صالحه فور الجوريثميك ستيبل كوينز ولكن اليابان عم تستبق هيدي يصير في يعني ارض خصبه لهيك نوع من الانوفيشنز وعم يقولوا We will ban algorithmic stable coin trading by the Japan. From some of the Japan, there was a little bit of discussion between Polygon and Solana fans. Let's say Solana, which was too much under pressure from the FTX meltdown, which happened, and because FTX is one of their main Uh, investors and backers as well. فريق uh, سولانا كان يعني عم يحاول يدافع عن البوزيشن تبعيته اليوم in the crypto markets. سولانا اللي في ناس كثير بتعتبرها it is heavily centralized blockchain ومنا blockchain يعني بتعريف التكنيكال للبلوكشين it is not A blockchain it is more of uh, a distributed uh, system it is more of a, uh, a private node party خلينا نقول ولكن اللي كذا مرة سولانا وقفت عن شغلة بهيد السنة وكمية الأموال اللي أخذتها من ال VCs من ال venture capital بتخلي ال venture capital opinion بقلب سولانا ومصالح الفنشر كابيتال بقلب سولانا اكثر ما تكون من مصلحه من مصالح الكوميونتي يلي عم نشوف فرق بينه وبين بوليجون بوليجون از الاستراتيجي اللي عم يتبعوها بضخ الاموال ان ذير ايكو سيستم ان ذير ابس ان ذير كوميونتيز ان ذير ديفلوبمنت ان جنرال is much more uh, oriented on getting users onto Polygon and getting projects onto Polygon with scaling Polygon more than what uh, Solana is, is doing. So, the um, mass adoption that is going to on Polygon is actually going to be the mass exodus of uh, Solana. So uh, uh, all brands they want to build on Ethereum's, uh, sorry, on Ethereum. Uh, Medium is is an access to uh, to to get into Ethereum. Um, FTX Bada Bill Bill. يعني شو بدنا نقول بنص العاصفه عاصفه الكريبتو اللي عم نشوفها اليوم اف تي اكس ستيل ان ذا ميدل اوف ميديا اتنشن المؤسف بالامر انه المؤسس ل اف تي اكس سام بانكمان فريد عم ياخذ الاضواء ليعتذر ويقول انه هو هي سوري فور مس يوزنج كاستمر فاندز هي سوري فور not managing FTX in a proper way. الإعلام والناس عم تطلب إنه FTX يكون يتحاسب ويصير في تحقيق شفاف وينعرف هل فعليا كان في فراد ولا كان في مسمانجمنت لأنه الفراد نهايتها criminal investigation simply mismanagement يمكن ما يكون فيها عقوبه سجن 
ولكن الناس عم تطلب السجن ل اس بي اف خاصه انه عم ياخذ مساحه اعلاميه كثير كبيره ليغطي الاخطاء اللي عملها ومش بس هو كل الاندورسمنتس يلي شافتها اف تي اكس من السليبرتيز من المشاهير اليوم كمان عم ترجع تنرد عليهم هالمره مش انه هن عم ياخذوا مصاري ولكن يمكن يضطروا انه يدفعوا مصاري هول السليبرتيز للناس يلي ضروها هيدا رودي كان كل شيء يمكن معنا لهيدا الاسبوع كمان بهذا الاسبوع او بالاحرى امبارح كثير من الكريبتو نيوز عم يحكوا عن رابع ملياردير بعالم الكريبتو مات ببورتو ريكو حدا من امبر جروب امبر تريدنج جروب توفى عم يقولوا هو نايم بتخته ولكن يعني شفنا ب بورتو ريكو ثلاثة آه، ثلاثة أشخاص ماتوا بالكريبتو بيملكوا كميات كثير كبيرة وكمان كان في شخص من الجالية الرومانية كمان توفى اللي هو بيعتبر ثاني أكثر شخص معه كريبتو من بعد آه، معه بيتكوين من بعد ساتوشي يعني آه، ما بعرف إذا هذا شيء عادي أما إتس جاست شو بدنا نقول آه... صدف 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 بس جماعه الكونسبيرسي ثيوري ما عجب ما ما حابين موضوع الصدف <تصفيق> كمان <تصفيق> كمان <تصفيق> بقول انه اذا كونسيدنس ما ما بعرف قديش ريلي غريبه غريبه انا بتذكر قبل حكينا فيها أه وبتذكر شو كان اسمه مكافي مكافي مزبوط مكافي از وان في دي رومانيان بيتكوين ويل يلي كمان توفى بغرقا بالبحر سو ذير هاز بين ا لوت اوف ديث ذس يير سبيسيفيكلي غريب اند ذا بيج كويشن بهول الفاوندرز وات دو هو دو يو ثينك هاز ذا كي لانه بالنهايه اتس ابوت كي مظبوط ب ان دي رومانيان كيس دي عم يقولوا دي كي واز اونلي وذ هيم ما عطى الكي فور هيز فاميلي سو هيز فاميلي موست بروبلي ما حيقدروا ياخذوا بنفيت من دي بليونز اوف دولارز ذات هي اونز ان كريبتو اون ذا اذر هاند هيدا الكي اذا كان بي نون كاستوديال واليت The only way they can get this key back is if there is a agreement with the defendant to be discussed with the case. So the people who have crypto want to give this crypto to the people who love it. They write the case and we have a crypto. If the crypto is present on a centralized exchange, put the username and password. If there is two-factor authentication, put the two-factor authentication. The passcode for the mobile phone. سو so, uh, في كثير قصص يعني بت, uh, بتساعد از ذير اني سوليوشن فور ذيس ان سمارت كونتراكت كثير فيوتشرستيك مش هلا اذا السمارت كونتراكت قادر يتاكد من الجريده الرسميه انه uh, هذا الزلمه مت, متوفي والجريده الرسميه او لنقول عشر جرائد حول العالم uh, عطت فعليا خبر انه هذا الزلمه توفى وأكدت هيدا الموضوع maybe then yes smart contracts through oracles they can be unlocked and transfer funds حسب الكود يلي مكتوب له لأي محافظ بدها تروح هيدي الأموال uh, ولكن لليوم لا لازم نوصى يا بكاد بالعدل أو بالمحامة يعني ما بعرف is it a conspiracy theory is it uh... ما بعرف يعني how to approach this انت your personal personal opinion do you think it's a conspiracy theory do I think it's a conspiracy theory يعني شوف وقت تصير مرة بقول لك اوكي مرتين اوكي بس تصير خمس مرات بهالسنة يعني في عندي شوية شك و question marks خاصة الناس يلي 
عم تشتغل بالكريبتو سبيس والبوزيشنز يلي عندهم اياها هيدي الناس يلي ماتت والطريقه يلي ماتوا فيها يعني بتحط علامات علامات استفهام ب 2012 رودي في كان دارك ويب وفي سلك رود صح وكان وكان في يعني انا شفتها بعيني ما حدا حكى لي اياها دعايات ل اساسينيشن اغتيالات يعني بتحط الدعايه بتحط انت الاعلان عفوا مش الدعايه بتحط الاعلان انا بدي اغتال رودي شوشاني هيدا ال هيدا شكله هيدا اسمه هاي صورته وهيدي 10 بيتكوين باوندي صح انا بتذكرهم هون صارت اذا بتصير اذا بصير في اثبات هيدا الاثبات عاده يبدو يكون خبر بالاخبار انه والله لقينا الشاب الفلاني او الصبي الفلاني مقتول بالسياره دان متى ما تاكدت هيدي الاخبار ان دي ميديا الاسكرو يلي موجودين فيه هول البيتكوين بيروحوا ل للزلمه للسبلاير اوف ذا سيرفيس هلا على هول الويب سايتس هول اسمهم اساسينيشن ماركتس على الاساسينيشن ماركتس كان في اساسينيشن اتمس على دونالد ترامب بشار الاسد حتى ناس كانت بعرفنا بعدين انه كانت عم تشتغل مع دي فاوندر اوف سيلك رود روس اولبريخت وهيدي كانت احد التهم يلي خلته ياخذ ثلاث سن يعني ثلاث مرات مؤبد الناس دائما بتقول انه روس هو الاب الروحي للبيتكوين هو بسببه انتشر البيتكوين بكل العالم ولكن بتنسى انه التهم يلي اخذها مش بس ل تسهيل عملية بيع المخدرات وتبييض الاموال و و و لانه هيدي ما بتروح فيها مؤبد هيدي بتطلع فيها انت لو بعد 50 سنه واحد بتنتهي المحكوميه وتطلع ولكن انك تاخذ مؤبد بقضايا مخدرات ما صار فيها دم الدم يلي كان حينهدر هي الاساس الاوردرز يلي صارت على الاساسينيشن ماركتس سو ليش عم نحكي هيدا الشيء؟ لانه اليوم يعني عم نقول نحن 2012 10 سنين لقدام يو هاف ديكيد تخيل قديش تطور هيدا السوق وتطورت هيدي الكابابيلتيز وتطور عالم العملات الرقميه. I'm not a conspiracy theorist ولكن يعني مثل ما قلت لك مره اوكي بس خمسه بسنه وحده خاصة دي رومانيان جاي لأنه دي روماني أنا ناسي اسمه كليا ولكن هيدا الشخص يلي توفى ببورتو ريكو بالبحر غرقا كان تاني أكثر شخص معه كريبتو من من بعد عفوا معه بيتكوين من بعد الوالد تبعيت ساتوشي و funny enough كمان this week I think شفنا a movement from one of the early wallets that was mining bitcoin اول uh, wallet عملت bitcoin mining صار فيها transaction uh, last uh, last week اسمه صعب معك حق اسمه ميرسيا بوبسكو يس 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 ومتهم هو بشيء اسمه هيز uh, controversial يعني the father of bitcoin toxicity Yeah, he is a very Bitcoin maximalist. Uh, like, and who are men billionaires in terms of dollar value when it comes to to Bitcoin? Yeah, في عنا سؤال من هون هاني بقول Kucoin are offering almost one hundred and seventy percent on staking ETH and two forty percent on BTC, a sign of collapse, of crash. Shifta, by the way, and I saw a yeah. lot of. انفورميشن كمان عم يحكوا عنا استغربت انه مش معقول يعطوا هالقد يلد على هالموضوع واتس واتس في عندك شيء انفو اي ثينك نو اي دونت هاف ريلي انفو رودي ولكن 
it is something we saw with many exchanges before. كل uh, الاكسجين بس هيدا الشيء شفناه نحن مثل ببيروت بس هون تايم ستاند عن بيروت صح ذس از ذا استراتيجي تو ريتين كابيتال اليوم ان كريبتو يو هاف تو اوفر ييلد يو هاف تو اوفر سمثينغ فيري كومبتيتيف تو يوزرز لا يقدروا يجوا لعندك على البلاتفورم وعلى المنصه uh, أنا عم بروح على كوين مايكر كاب بهالوقت تشوف إذا كوكوين عملوا عملوا اكشينج ريزيرف اند داتا افيلابيلتي عملوا الموضوع يا دون نيد ساتش موفز تيقولوا إنه نحن يعني ميبي ذي أنا أي واز ثينكينج ميبي ذي واز تيكن إت تيحطوا هال إنه طلعوا نحن بالمحفظة تبعنا فيه هالقصص كود بي إيه كود بي إت كود بي يوزد إن Like proof of reserve strategies. I really don't have a definite answer for it. But again, most of the exchanges today, I'm talking about tier one exchanges. They follow more or less the same strategy. In this way, when the exchange is centralized, you can either get in the yield or get in the funds. We see you have liquidity provisioning. We see you. انسايتس اكثر ما انت وقت تكون على دكس كل الكنترولز بين ايديك سو فيك تعمل اذا بدك 100% اي بي واي كل شيء اندر بلاك بوكس ما حدا شايفك شو عم تعمل من وين عم يجي اليلد هيدا السؤال السؤال لازم يكون مش قديش انت عم تعطي يلد من وين عم يجي اليلد تبعك اوكي في هون ايان goes to jail while Mr. Uh, Mr. Fried <laughs> I love his, fa- his family name ما حدا بيسمي فرايد يا اخي anyway uh, SBF uh, goes free he hired he hired they hired uh, هلا سمعت they hired the lawyers هلا جيبون uh, something very big shot هلا بشوف اكسون uh... هن they hired the The same investigators and lawyers and financial team, يلي اشتغل على من أكبر عمليات الاختلاس بتاريخ أمريكا Exxon. FTX بلعت أكبر fraud بتاريخ أمريكا بخلال يعني ساعات. It was the new CEO تبع FTX الساعة تبعيته ألف وثلاثمية دولار. يعني مثل ما بيقولوا جبنا جبناك يا عبد المعين لتعيننا صار عبد المعين بده مين يعينه لا في دفاتر مضبوطه لا في بوك كيبينج اكاونتنسي طلع ما بيعرف شيء لا من قريب ولا جديد يعني وات سي او اوف ا كومباني ذات دازنت نو وات فاينانشلي ذا سيتويشن اكزاكت يعني اذا انت ما عارف قديش عندك اكسبوجر اون يور تريدنج بلاتفورمز قد ايه في الكاستمر فاندز تبعولك قد ايه It's uh, هون بنرجع من من عيد ما فينا نحكم هل في مس مانجمنت ولا في فراد في يعني هل في انتشنال فراد ولا لا مثل ما بنحكي بالعام حمار ومعبى بنطلون يعني بس بيصير معه 3 4 مليار طبعا اذا كنت لون بشرتك ابيض ومخرج من ستانفورد او ام اي تي شعرك مكسبر ويهودي وامك محاميه لهيلاري كلينتون وبيك محامي لمدري مين اوكي بتقدر تجيب 3 4 مليار دولار اتس نوت ا بيج ايشو ولكن انك تصرفهم على اساس في ريتيرنز وفي كريبتو وفي مارجن تريدنج وعلى مدى ريسيرش ون اوف ذا بيست ماركت ميكرز يعني عملوا البحر طحينه كانه هيدا الزلمه يعني عملوه بعد شوي مثل نبل كريبتو انه هيدا النابغه هيدا وبالاخر شو طلع؟ طلع نصاب حرامي بقصده ولا بغير قصده قرط مسار العالم مثل ما عمل بايننسز فاند مثل ما عمل كل هول الكريبتو سكامز اللي صارت بلبنان وعم تصير عنا بالعالم العربي عمل مثلهم بعضه على اخره 
يا هون جاوبك بعتقد الياس بقول لك اس بي اف از سو باد وايل لوكينج لايك ا فيكتيم انت كنت قلت حمار وما غيره كمان از از ا فيكتيم ان ذا سبيس هون في عندنا سؤال من لميا جابان از وورنينج اجينست الجوريتميك كوينز كنت انت اي ثينك يو منشن ذس ايرلير ازنت كاردانو بوشينج سمثينج لايك ذات if i'm not mistaken cardano has stopped with their uh, stable coin uh, project okay uh, if i'm not mistaken ma ba yemkin ma'lumat tkun galat walakin uh wa ka'anni fahamt min akhir tweets sarat shifta from the cardano community and they halted their stable coin uh, project I might be mistaken again. Please correct me. Zafir. Even Elon Musk is saying he might be assassinated. Honey, come on. Say a look. So, all honey, as if you have a source that has been there, we're going to be happy. I think, even uh, uh, this uh, piece of news, um, uh, Elon Musk gives this message because you know, he's sleeping in the office with a gun next to him. آه. ألون ماسك حط صور على تويتر صور جن آه. انه هو بس ينام بيخلي اكزاكتلي آه. exactly. بيخلي الفرد وبيخلي انان الكوكا كولا حد فاضيين سو اي ثينك اتس مور اوف ا كومنت فور ذا فيرست امندمنت اكثر ما ان هي كومنت انه انا بخطره بس ما نستبعد كمان انه يس ألون ماسك مايت بي ان دينجر بسبب شغله بستارلينك سايدنج وذ يوكرين اند اول ذيس لايك اول ذيس اكتيفيتيز ذات هي هاز دون يعني ذا جاي هاز انيميز يا اكيد الياس يو واتش ذا انترفيو اوف ذا ساند بوكس فيري انترستنج اي ادفايز يو تو شير ات كمان سو ذات وي كان سبريد ات نحن رح ننزلها لوحدها كمان ات فيري اكسكلوسيف لا دي اكس توكس اند كريبتو توكس سو Uh, make sure to spread it. It has a lot of information. First time, hotel to smile. A lot of fud. Hon, I'm talking. Hi, Marie. Marie Clemence. A lot of fud on Polygon and being pulled from different places. Any issue? Come again, uh, Rudy. Sorry, ma, I didn't hear you. A, a lot of fud on Polygon. And yes, yes, pulled. yes, yes. That's uh, that's normal uh, in, in this space. فض على كل البروجيكتس فض على الفاوندرز على التيم على الكوميونتي على اتس ون اوف ذا كومبيتيشن ويز بس نحن yeah. في عندنا يعني في بلوك تشين نروح نقراها في وايت بيبر نقراها نعمل اور اون ريسيرش ما ضروري نسمع العالم شو بدها uh, علي خان بيقول لك وات از ذا سيفست واليت جود كويشن علي سيفست واليت Uh, non-custodial definitely uh, out of the non-custodial wallets I would choose Ledger uh, it's a cold wallet I would use as well I personally I use Trust Wallet uh, they're all safe best again please be careful while you're using if you're a new user or you're downloading a new wallet you're moving assets from one wallet to another wallet always always double check that you're using the original wallet and not a fake wallet how yeah um, in the beginning of the year in february 2022 i had a new android phone i downloaded on the samsung store not on the play store trust wallet but it was not a real trust wallet it was a fake trust wallet yani everything looked exactly the same it's just not trust wallet when you're putting your i was moving my wallet from one phone to another so i downloaded from the samsung store on my phone on my new phone trust wallet and instead of opening a new one i'm recovering my old wallet so i'm moving my wallet from my old phone to my new phone i'm recovering it so it asked me to put my seed phrase i put my seed phrase but i put my seed phrase in the wrong trust wallet obviously uh, nothing happened immediately but after two hours i saw that my wallet was empty so i realized that i was fished and i 
put, I downloaded the wrong wallet. So in this experience, Trust Wallet is good, but Stay did a bad thing. And always, always, always double check what you are downloading and where you are clicking. Uh, يعني أنا هلا نحكي عادة عن موضوع uh, I was fished in an indirect way. It wasn't direct fishing, but uh, I fell a victim of this. يلا خير. Uh, out of this buzz is Caesar the hero of crypto. Ah, قبل ما أخذ uh, هاني's comment, uh, we had an interesting discussion last week. كنا بجروب دبي قاعدين. And I said I don't trust Trust Wallet, even though it is non-custodial. So it's a very interesting discussion. Actually, my analogy was that Trust Wallet is now owned by Binance. And at one point of time, we were running away from USDT, USDC, and so on and so on. And then we are getting BUSD. And I mentioned you know, BUSD is possibly not safe. Possibly, because now CZ has a lot of haters. So maybe he can be hacked. Maybe he can be taken down the same way he tried to take others. I tell you, he was trying to take Coinbase. He's trying to take, uh, uh, small, uh, Mish Bitcoin, uh, Crypto.com. But now he he relaxed shway actor. So I said BUSD because I've been moving to BUSD since last year. Perfect. But now BUSD is owned is always owned by Binance to a certain point, and now people started moving to Trust Wallet. As I've seen adoption of Trust Wallet last two months, especially after FTX, it was huge. But again, Trust Wallet is owned by <laughs> Binance, and if Binance goes away, hala regardless, I know the market will crash. We have to leave the crypto. Kullo, we understand that, but also your whole investment is going the same way as FTX. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, the ledger is the only safest other alternative and True. the one and only, I would say. And I'm afraid of the trust wallet for the reason. Open source, the software code is present. Everyone can open it, read it, check it. The uh, other thing... But they can shut it down. They can shut the wallet down, but your money is safe. Lano, you are owner of the keys and not Trust Wallet. Hala, unless Trust Wallet has a backdoor and it can collect all seed phrases, that's a different story. I don't think there is a backdoor. But I'm so I can be mistaken as well. Uh, as a non-custodial wallet trust wallet is fine but it's not that we trust it blindly of course not uh, in case Binance goes down trust wallet will continue because from a management perspective command, they're independent uh, trust wallet has its own team it has its own um, like kill she but trust wallet has its own operations um, as well el, el foundations of all trust wallet are solid yani binance acquired trust wallet they didn't build it yes they're contributing to building it now Yes, they were very smart in marketing for a ready product like Trust Wallet as a safe haven for your assets. Don't trust sexes, including us, Binance. Don't trust us. Here is non-custodial wallet. Trust Wallet, use it. They're smart. You know? So, Trust Wallet token as well went up in in prices like 100% went up it's it's all it's all related but we can we can trust it definitely thank you tay ala uh, your input and being with us i think it's an amazing uh, episode a lot of info a lot of guests a lot of uh, contemplation to think about uh, just make sure you don't fall victim 
<laughs> because we're uh, and I'm bad now. I'm still bugged because I I, I really get felt even though it's, uh, Adi, Adi. Adi. I know Adi. I know I know but uh, still I know I I always double and triple check but come in the, at one point of time you're taken on your weakest point and that was uh, at that point of time anyway so uh, yeah. thank you see you next week have a great week see you next week وشكرا رودي وتحياتنا مرة جديدة لكل الناس اللي عم تتابعنا uh, هيدي أكتر من سنة نحنا معكم and we'll continue next year uh, إن شاء الله uh, عم نشتغل على كريبتو ريكاب for this year شو أهم الأحداث اللي صارت وشو منتوقع لل 2023 so make sure to attend our next or our last three sessions for this year Thank you, Tay. So, Metal uh, Mashifto, very active, very busy, a lot of info, uh, a lot of updates. Um, uh, hope you watch this episode from the beginning. I know we had an exclusive interview with uh, Sebastian Bourguet, the founder of the, Sand- uh, the Sandbox Metaverse. So, عطينا كتير tips for DX Talks. عطينا كتير tips for our uh, viewers, for you. So, make sure to check it. And then we have Maria Vovshok, uh, coming in one of the top leaders of blockchain and fintech space. And then we hosted her for the first time to know her input, which is great and much appreciated. With that, نحنا ننتهي. And then we'd like to thank you and see you next week. We still have, if I'm not mistaken, three episodes. All right, those are the last three, and hopefully on the 28th we celebrate also uh, happy early happy new year with all of you, and then we will be concluding our uh, episodes on uh, 160 episodes. Uh, so uh, there will be some prizes, of course, as every year. So be square or be fair or be a lot and join us. Soon.